All right, guys, here we are. The map is ESV Ohana, and then the bottom right part of it, we've got our red Protoss player. Hopefully, he can do a little bit better than the last one that we saw from Team MVP. It is Vampire. And in the upper left, we have our Zerg player taking a game off MVP, tying things up for his team, Caronte Esports Club. It is LOL vs. XD, or as we like to call him, LOL. Or Lolvi. I like Lolvi, because it reminds Lolvi. me of Wolvi, like Wolverine. Or Wally, that no, robot? Not like that. Not oh, like that. Alright, just Wolvi? Lolvi and just... Wally are not really that similar. Well, Wally and Wolverine are completely different too. That's true. One's a robot and the other one's made of metal. I think they should change Wolverine in the comic books to just act like he does in Marvel vs. Capcom where like anyone Drill claw. Well yeah, someone like walks up to him in the morning and it's like, Good morning, Wolverine, how are you doing? And he's just like Berserker Barrage! Berserker Drill Barrage! Drill claw. Over and over again. He's like, damn. It's like, Wolverine, I, I, what, what's going on? He's just like, Berserker Barrage. And then uh, he's like, I made some Canadian bacon for breakfast, <laughs> eh? It's your favorite, eh? And he's like, Drill Claw, Drill Claw. <laughs> Berserker <laughs> Barrage. Berserker <laughs> Barrage. That's what happened if uh, comic books were a lot more like Marvel vs. Capcom. That's right. Which, unfortunately, they're not. Oh, well. 15 pool going down for Law vs. XD. Pretty normal opening here in the probe. We'll see. It. So we're going to have probably a hatchery getting down here. And I'm curious to see if Law vs. XD is going to do what you talked about earlier and wait until he has some Zerglings to make sure that he can take his first expansion at his natural or if he's going to go ahead and head all the way over here and take it. Looks like he's going to be content with just waiting for some Zerglings first, I would imagine, unless he can get a little bit lucky here. Yeah, and, 15 uh, pool makes makes me think. I mean, obviously he's gonna he might even be up to 350 or 400 minerals by the time he can actually build the pool. But yeah, I think he'll wait. It's Whoop. worth the wait. There it goes. Wow, oh, he man. did get it down. Vampire just let him have it. Yeah, he wanted to get that forge up. Didn't want to take any uh, potential for early damage or anything like that. Yeah, he did just see that last game where <laughs> yeah, didn't that's, work out so great with the with the pylon. It's a bit awkward. At the Zerg base. Yeah, <laughs> that was I. That was a very strange opening from MVP Lure. I. Like I said, I think I got the philosophy behind it, but the execution, I think, left a little bit something to be desired. I don't so, know what execution could have been done. <laughs> well, I think he was just really trying to, again, you know, deny that third, but it just was not very good at doing that, no. I think. <laughs> he could have built a pylon there instead. That actually would have been cheaper and more effective, I think, than what he did. Because right. he had to make, what, 100 on the pylon, 150 on the gateway, another 100 on the zealot. Yeah, he, he was up to two or three zealots uh, yeah. by the end of that, too. It's definitely more expensive than one pylon that you cancel. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, Law vs. XD getting a good scout, seeing everything that's going on at his opponent's base. And it looks like he is scouting with the Zergling to try to find any sort of hidden probe so that he can take a safe third base, getting this one a little bit earlier than he did last time. Yep, and that Zergling is going to try and defend... Uh, his last little drone there long enough to uh, to get that hatchery planted. Good Zergling. Good boy. That's right. Chase nice. that nice job. vampire probe away. Look, he's being a vampire <laughs> with those minerals. That's right. He's sucking the resources out of his opponent. He is. And, and taking them for himself. It's like when they take gas, they're almost like vampirizing the gas geysers. They suck the gas right out of it. Is vampirizing a word? <laughs> it is I now. won't look it up. It uh, is you know now. what? I trust you so much. I won't even look up vampirizing. Vampire. They, see, that's why I like you, Josh. <laughs> you don't. You don't question. You just accept that vampirizing is a word. You know, as soon as we, I saw that vampire was playing. I wanted. I, I've been struggling in my mind to cast the game and think of a way to work in Vampire Nighthawk, but <laughs> I gave up just now <laughs> by just saying it. It's okay. Anyone play Magic? 2013 core set comes out this week, and Vampire Nighthawk is going to be the friggin' most awesome card in the world. What does it do again? It's two? a two-three flying death touch lifelink. Wow! For three, it's a bit ridiculous. For one and two swamps, you get all that, and it's insane. <laughs> all that and so much more. And so much more. With five easy payments of nineteen ninety-nine. Yeah. If you play Magic at Gosudoa at Ask Josh, you tell us about your Magic pre-release and release right. stuff because it's I, we are very fascinated by that stuff. We love Magic here. Oh yeah, I've been playing Magic: The Gathering for what like a day and a 18 half. Eighteen years. <laughs> a little bit longer than a day and a half. Oh. 18 years. Uh, my, whatever. My DCI number is close. quite short. It's only six <laughs> digits. My DCI number is seven. No, no, mine's shorter <laughs> than that then. I'm just kidding. It's, it's the number seven. It's not seven oh, digits. Oh, you're just the number seven. Yep. You're like the seventh guy in yep. line when they opened up the DCI. That's right. Cool. Which, do you know what DCI stands for? Here's some Magic the Gathering trivia for. Actually, should we make people tweet us and tell us if sure. they know? All right. Yeah. Here's, what, here's what's going to happen. Because I totally know. Here's what's going to happen. A little bit, not, not quite on topic for StarCraft, but it is something that nerds such as us enjoy. If you can tell me, tell us rather, 
what DCI stands for in relation to Magic the Gathering. Tweet at AskJoshy at GoSudoa. Let us know. And uh, also let us know with that who you think is going to win this match, too. So we will <laughs> tie it in with StarCraft a little bit, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. curious to see how many people know that. If you get it right, we might shout you out, shout you out on the air. Maybe. Maybe. If you're lucky. So this game is happening, right? That's right. And the right. Vampire Nighthawk is just building gateways all over the place, and Lolvi has a lair already almost done. He's got another hatchery coming up. That'll put him at four. It's just a macro hatch this time, though. And uh, Vampire's just, you know, doing very standard things. Actually, robotics facility about halfway done. Yeah. Lots of gateways. You can see even more about to be plopped down now. And just protecting that front like you do with a Forge Fast Expand. 52 probes against 55 drones right now. Yeah. Uh, very even economically. That's surprising. Yeah. So we're going to have, uh, well, when you use a lot of Chrono Boost mm -hmm. on your Nexuses like uh, Vampire has been doing, you're going to be planning on expanding, and that's why he's focusing down these rocks as well. Full wall off at the front. It's going to keep that ramp safe, and then he's just going to use this one as kind of the main entrance and exit so that he can defend this third base location as well. So... Uh, looks like it's going to be three base build out of our Protoss player going for that macro game. Things pretty normal, nothing out of the ordinary on the Zerg side of things as well. Lol vs XD going for roaches. you know roaches and <laughs> Zerglings. That's about it, man. Getting his macro hatch at the normal time, getting a few more gas so that he makes sure that he has some uh, upgrade capability as well. Can move into some higher tech a little bit later, and uh, we may see him take a fourth base soon. I mean. What's going to happen now is a lot of Zerg players would be checking about now for this third base. And w if we see it, as soon as we do, he's going to be trying to make a beeline probably for this area right here to take a fourth. Some players like to take this on, on this map for their fourth, but I feel like it's a little bit more vulnerable. Actually, both places are kind of vulnerable yeah, on this map. they both have those wide open um, sides, but it looks like Lulvers XD is just doing what he did last game. Yeah. Um, didn't kill any Stalkers for free or Zealots or anything like that at the beginning of the game, so he doesn't have that same advantage that he had uh, in the last one, but he is going to try and make it work anyway. Ohana's nice for that, actually, because it is kind of wide open. Um, obviously, the forge wall-off at the front is good, but now he's got this space between the third base and the natural to be able to move through as well. Yep, look at this, trying to cause that cancel on the Nexus. He's willing to sacrifice his roaches to do that, it looks like, and the Nexus getting low, yeah, it does need to be canceled. And now Ooh, he will try crap. to focus down some of the sentries as well. Look at those force fields, though. Yeah, so many force fields going down. A lot of those Not roaches bad. got trapped, and almost none of them actually managed to escape. That immortal on top just taking care of business. No kidding. And a ton of roaches got slaughtered there. Uh, Lover's XD does still have a supply advantage, but basically you would, you need it with the strategy he's doing. 15 roaches Whoa. in reduction makes up 30 of that supply as well. So he's actually outgunned at the, uh, at the place where the fight is happening. Yep, that's right. Oh, that road, one roach did not get the memo. Wow, his leg just totally flew there. Yeah, dude. Check that out. But now here's the thing is that Vampire now has been opened up to a very strong timing for a counterattack. Essentially, this is going to be a big gateway 1-1 one, one immortal push. And that's going to be pretty tough to deal with for our Zerg player. Although, wow, he actually gets the opportunity to focus down an immortal early on. Vampire not with the best engagement here. Uh, still just roach blood all over the place, yeah. though, and those force fields managed to trap a few, managed to keep them away uh, from the stalkers and sentries, so, you know, uh, maybe not the best initiate, but not a terrible trade uh, overall. Well, he wanted to go farther with that, for sure. Yeah. That's really the, the unfortunate thing, is that by losing those sentries and that immortal, he's taken away his ability to really be that aggressive with it, and now Lalvers XD is going to maybe try to take advantage of that fact. Looks like he is just going to pull back, play a little bit more defensive, though. And it almost looks like our Zerg player just wants to end the game right here, man. I don't think yeah, he's planning on expanding I off of this. I think he definitely wants to end the game right here. Yeah. He's using all his larva for roaches. He does have a pretty substantial supply lead still, but he, I think his best bet is going to be waiting till max, because at this point, he's just throwing them into the grinder right now. These immortals Ooh, yeah. still doing so much damage, not getting focused down. Yep. You can see roaches trapped on the left side. They're stuck between force fields completely, and splitting your force there at that point, that's just... Totally not going to work out. Yeah, he they killed take a, cannon. Out a cannon. Congratulations. And many, many roaches. So, Vampire, uh, yeah, forcing the GG, GG just by holding that off. Wow. Okay. So, an easy win there for MVP Vampire. I feel like, you know, Lol vs. XD kind of put a little bit too much into.